Greeting stamp sleuths. Today we're going to investi investigate some Confederate stamps, Confederate state stamps of America, 1861 to 62 and 1862 to 1864. I got these in a box lot that I showed a little while ago on a video. Uh, I got quite excited when I saw them. I said, oh, these are going to be neat because they looked really well made and they looked like they could be real. Uh, imagine my surprise when I took them out and started to process them and saw this on the back. Back simile, I don't know if you can see that. Number one. So these are all printed on the back with the word facsimile and a number. They go from one to, I believe it's 12 or 13. So I started to do some research and I think you can probably see I've got a circular here. I did this October 24th and uh, that's when I um, took these apart and had a look at them. And they're actually considered facsimile, facsimiles, but they're interesting. So I'm going to do a bit of a video on this. Uh, it seems to me from what I've read that more times than not, Confederate stamps are fakes, facsimiles, rape prints, or counterfeits, without question. Every once in a while, you'll come across a real one. However, that doesn't mean that these aren't collectible to some measure. Now, when I started to do some research, I came across this website here, and it's called CSA Postal History Fakes. And uh, it has this little uh, article, which I printed out and then sub uh, highlighted because I thought this had to, a little bit to do with these. From what I gather, these are called Springfield facsimiles. And they are the fakes that are most commonly seen. Now, there's a story behind these. They were made in the 1930s as a set of 14 count counterfeits of the Confederate general issue stamps and were made and sold by a stamp dealer in Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay. They were also used in the so-called TASCO booklets prepared in 1941. TASCO stands for Tatham Stamp Company of Springfield, Massachusetts. In order to make the counterfeits, a set of original drawings made by August Dietz in 1919 were used. So the drawings, and I'm reading this right off the book, the drawings were copyrighted. So the use of these drawings was, was done without the consent of the original creator. These counterfeits were made and sold as singles or for blocks of four of either unused or in used condition. Now, since they originated in Springfield, Mass., they've become known by collectors as the Springfield facsimiles. Protests over these fakes that were issued at the time and, and the maker uh, then agreed to stop selling the bogus used ones and to put the word facsimile, sometimes misspelled, on the backs of the unused stamps. But a number has already been sold. So if fakes both exist with and, out, with and without the word facsimile on the back. And there's still some uh, Springfield facsimiles floating around with phony postmarks. And some have even been used to create phony covers. So these essentially are legitimized fakes. Now I've got the whole set of 14 and it shows them here. CSA 1, CSA 2 to CSA 14. They're nice looking stamps. I have to say they are imperforate. They don't have perforations on them. The printing is a fairly decent quality. Now, the one thing about these you, you need to know is that they were made on a paper that was far different from that of the uh, original stamps. Many of the facsimiles were printed on bleached white paper, while some of them were uh, printed on yellowish. And you can see mine's a yellowish type of paper. So if it doesn't have the word facsimile on it and you see a yellowish paper, that's a clue. That's how you can tell them from the real thing. If they're not marked facsimile in the back uh, and they're yellowish paper, they're likely the fakes. But if they're uh, white, whitish paper, they're real. Now, this goes on here to talk about how to tell um, the fakes from the real. For example, this is a CS, uh, CSA1. And this is the overall appearance. It has a, uh, they say, the CSA1 and 4 have a flat appearance and the vertical lines under the value are, are, are incomplete or missing altogether. So you have to look very close to see what's going on with this. But because these are yellow paper, it's a, it's a giveaway. Uh, this is the CSA 1. The CSA 2 differs from the originals um, in the fact that uh, it's got uh, different kind of paper. Again, it's yellow. And the facsimiles are, are um, uh, dubbed the pouting mouth because the appearance of Thomas Jefferson's lower lip. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but he does look a bit pouty in this image. 
his his lips don't quite look there's not a smile there now apparently the facsimile number three which is this one is the most dangerous because because it is enough well done that it's hard to tell again the paper is different so it's yellow so mine tells me that this along with the facsimile on the back that wasn't there i would suspect it because of, it, uh, of its color uh, I guess so the paper is different. There are various missing periods in the word CSA. So you have to look up into in here, which of course won't show in the camera, but I can see in the naked eye there's one period and no others. So if you've got one dot and you're missing the rest, it's a fake. And then also the crossbar of the T and 2 is not connected uh, to the upper right bar. So in the denomination, you and again, you can't really see this very clearly in here. So this little paper here, I uploaded from the internet, and its um, address is www.jlkstamps, all one word, lowercase, dot com, backslash fakes. And in there, you can find out some of this information. So I just wanted to discuss this because I was kind of, disappointed but not because I do collect fakes and counterfeits that is an actual thing with stamp collectors there are people that will collect it uh, now all of these are the Springfield there are other fakes this page here that I've just turned to discusses New York counterfeits and uh, the New York counterfeit is the CSA number six so one two three four five six. it would be this would look like this uh, it's a mistake and very commonly for the real stamp by dealers and collectors because it's so well, well done. And um, the counterfeits, again, were made in the 19th century, not long after the end of the war, for the express purpose to deceive collectors. And the, the ones that um, are the New York counterfeits, which this isn't, this is Springfield. However, I wanted to discuss this. The ones in New York uh, were made in New York, hence the name New York counterfeit. With these counterfeits, uh, there are some mistakes, and it's usually easy to, to tell from the original. The first thing with uh, New York would be that uh, the image has a somewhat flat uh, appearance, and the blue-green color of the original uh, CSA 6 were never printed in a blue-green color, but a uniform blue or light blue color. So this kind of aqua blue color is a real giveaway. So that's important to look at it. But the easiest to see characteristic, uh, other than the sickly blue-green color, is that when mistakes were made in redoing the uh, value tablet, the crossbar of the F and the E in the letter 5 are shorter than the originals. So you have to actually look at the crossbar. And apparently in the originals, the, five, the crossbar of the F and the E are considerably longer. So uh, you'd have to actually go online to discover that. So there has been a lot of fakery, not just in, in uh, the U.S., but in Birmingham, England. Birmingham, England um, put out some reproductions or fakes of CSA 1, CSA 3, and CSA 4. The reproductions themselves were lithographed and were so good that they found their way into certain catalogs and albums of illustrations for the genuine stamp. And the Birmingham counterfeits are actually somewhat scarce, so they have significant value uh, as a collectible in their own right. The five, do, uh, five cent value of the CSA 1 and CSA 4 are quite easily to t easy to tell from the original by one ma ma major characteristic. The scroll ornament at the lower right of the counterfeit is circular, whereas in the original it's oval. So when they talk about the scroll, they're talking about this, this here. So uh, one of them is circular. Here's the circular on this side. I don't know if you can see it. Circular and oval. So um, the counterfeit has a circular and the genuine has the oval. So there's little things that you can uh, find online and when you come across these stamps that tell you uh, whether you've got the real thing or not. Now there's also ones called the Sparati forgeries. And this is France, a French forger, John Desperati. He counterfeit two of the Confederate stamps, a 10 cent rose and the 10 cent, and I don't know if I've got those here. I don't think I do, no I don't. Uh, and a 10 cent uh, number nine. So I must have them here. That's two cents, I'm trying to think. Oh, that would be this. 
There's the 10 cent number nine. I'm not sure where the 10 cent rose is. Uh, almost all of them are signed on the back with Sparati signature. So that's one of the way you can tell. However, there are some that are unsigned. There are a number of giveaways uh, for the forged um, items. The prominent one is the fact that the T and the E and 10 are joined at the top of the forgery and they're distinctly separate in the um, original. The other prominence is that uh, the, uh, there's a white dot to the right of the E of the word postage. Now, I don't have that example here because these, these are not Sparatis. And it goes on. This, this little book has, uh, they say that there's little Confederate fantasy stamps and then fake provisionals. So you have to be very careful when buying these. Now, when I went on internet to do research on this, I thought, okay, so what have I got here? Are there any values? So I went and I looked uh, for some Confederate states. This is a Scott number two mint facsimile. So that would be the 10 cent. This is a Scott two. And they're at, uh, getting 395 or 547 US. Now there had been no bids at the time on this and I didn't watch it, but they are being uh, put up for nominal value. Here is a set of replicas, 10 Civil War replicas, which would be akin to what I've got here. I've got 14, so I've got 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So mine would be worth a little bit more because it's the whole set. However, this tells you here, and um, these have been selling uh, for um, buy it now, 9.95 US or 13.77 Canadian, and then you've got your shipping. And uh, that, that made me feel okay because that's what I've got. Now, this did not say specifically what kind of forgeries they were, whether they were the Springfield facsimile. Uh, it didn't say anything on, on the paper that uh, whether there was uh, typographical information on the back like I found on these. However, um, I am still happy with them. Like I said, I collect fakes and forgeries and facsimiles and these definitely are going into my collection because of that so I, I there was a me small measure of disappointment I got a little bit ex excited when I saw all this on the page but it wasn't why I had bid on that lot anyways and I knew that there was a 50-50 chance or actually a bigger chance that they might be uh, fakes or forgeries but I've never seen them um, and I, again I'm going to pop them in my fake and counterfeit stamp collection and enjoy them and pass them on to my son if he's interested in them later on uh, and I'm quite happy that I've got them but again as a stamp collector if you start to get into this be very careful because not all eBay sellers are as honest as this not all stamp sellers are as honest as this these clearly state state facsimile or replica on their uh, listings so if you're looking at a group of, of these stamps uh, make sure if they're not listed as um, facsimiles or uh, real one way or the other that you ask the seller to verify because and, and if they do verify how did they verify uh, because again some of these stamps hold some value especially if they're real and uh, you don't want to be rooked and that is a world of stamp collecting you have to be careful about a lot of stamps are forged if they have value so anyways that's it for today I'm going to take a few minutes to pop these in my collection and I'm glad I've got them uh, not too disappointed and I'm glad I found out the history behind them so until next time keep on looking into and for stamps stamp sleuth signing off